Hey guys, this is Patrick with my good friend Gary McIntosh, who uh, was with Operation Underground Railroad originally, and now with A21. And he uh, he has been gracious enough to take a few minutes with me here and um, share some insights into the industry and into what we're doing, his thoughts on our uh, Certainty Partners program. So thanks for being here, Gary. Yeah, absolutely, man. Always good to, to jump on. And uh, it's not always the brightest topic to discuss, you know, the, the work that I've been involved in, but uh, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to, to talk about it because I think it's an important issue to discuss from time to time. Absolutely. You know, you, you're right. It's a, it's a topic that we wish we didn't have to talk about, right? Something yep. that is a, a real travesty in, in our culture today. Unfortunately, it's a huge problem. And if you guys don't know, uh, OUR and A21, uh, they work in the trafficking industry, you know, sex trafficking and other forms of, of slavery. Uh, Gary has worked with, um, with them in development on the fundraising side for the last couple of years. And Prior to that, worked in the medical arena, and um, you know. So, I guess my first question is, what's it been like, you know, living in that space for for two years? Yeah, I mean, the, the question I sometimes get is is sort of why or or how did you get in, into that space? Um, and and you know, everybody kind of has their their own story that works for organizations like these. It's and it's usually pretty significant. I mean, you know, I had a career in in healthcare, spent more than a decade in executive leadership and working for healthcare software companies and practice management companies. Um, and the truth is, is that one day I just saw a documentary, and you know, I I put the kids to bed. It's not a super exciting story, but I was just kind of flipping through channels and. Uh, something caught my eye about, you know, undercover operators or something of that sort and started watching it. And by the time an hour and a half had gone by, I was standing in my living room, just shaking because of what I was learning about, you know, what was happening around the world. So um, it's, you know, some days are tough. I mean, there's stories that we encounter that you really don't want to know or hear, particularly when kids are involved. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's an important issue. You know, I, I think the, I think that a lot of people, particularly in the U S, um, think that slavery has been eradicated and, and that's true. I think at least in, in policy and law, but the reality is that there are, uh, millions of people around the world, 40 million people around the world that are in modern day slavery and, it's the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the history of the world. So it surpassed the illegal arms trade. It's projected to surpass the drug trade. Mm -hmm. And people ask, why, why is it so prevalent? Why is it growing so quickly? Um, you can sell a bag of cocaine once. You can sell a child five to 10 times a day for years. And that's the reality that these kids are, are, are living in. So uh, it, it's happening here in the US, um, you know, men and, and, and women are subject to it. Uh, you know, you kind of think of maybe people who are, um, who are, who are poor or, um, you know, maybe more vulnerable than others. And that's certainly the case. But it really happens at, at every echelon of society. And we're seeing that right now, you know, with the Maxwell trial going on, I don't know if you've been following with that, but um, you know, just high level people in, in a lot of places, unfortunately participate in this kind of thing as well. But I could go on and on, I'll, I'll digress, but it is a serious issue. And I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity just to do a little bit to, to help and, and actually rescue, uh, rescue survivors and provide aftercare resources for them. Yeah, I can imagine, you know, whether you're a volunteer or you work full time, however mm -hmm. long you do that, I think there are many people who get into it, serve for a little while, get out of it because you can only do so much or you can only handle so much. And then, you know, but I think once you've had any exposure to this yeah. industry and this, the, the nonprofits that are working to combat it, it kind of changes you forever. I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't think you could ever, ever think about it without without wanting to help, right? Without wanting to contribute in one way or another. So uh, my hat is off to you for the service you've given, you know, and um, you know, I guess uh, 
I think I know the question or the answer to this question, but I did want to hear from you. What what's their biggest need? I mean, what is it that uh, companies like OUR or organizations like A21? You know, what is it that they need from us, from the general population, and, and just in general, uh, in your experience, what do you think that is? Yeah, so there, there's just a couple, three things I think that are really at the top of that list. Uh, obviously, awareness is huge. Um, right. I mean, we say all the time that you know, kind of alluding to the point that you were making about just being exposed to it, you know, it's once you hear about it happening, you know, you, you're sort of forced to make a decision, right? It's like now you have knowledge that this thing is happening and particularly with kids. And I think you have to ask yourself the question, you know, well, what, what is my role in that? How can I, how can I play a part in that? And so um, awareness is key. Um, you know, we, we, we do things like, uh, you know, there's a, there's a, a hope ride, for example, happening uh, this, this coming weekend where somebody's riding their bike from Jacksonville to Miami uh, in, in order to sort of raise awareness and, and also raise funds as well. Um, you know, but out, outreach opportunities with corporations, churches, communities, uh, and then of course, of course, funding, you know, it, it takes a long time to establish connections with law enforcement, connections with pro prosecutors, connections with aftercare facilities, all the things that anti-trafficking organizations like OUR and H21 have taken the time to do, they've established those channels. And so partnering with groups like that financially, they already have a paved way and they already have people uh, who are in key areas of impact. So um, you know, and there, there are, there's other organizations out there. I mean, I, I could, I could recommend a, a whole list of them, um, but I will say that, you know, uh, A21 and o OUR uh, both are, are individually working in more than 15 countries and both have rescued thousands of survivors uh, in, uh, during their tenure. So great organizations to partner with and definitely awareness. Um, you know, I always love to tell the story about uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe, who wrote a book called Uncle Tom's Cabin in 1852. Essentially, her actions in, in writing that book uh, led led people to many of them the first understanding of of actually what was what the atrocity of slavery was, and we feel like there's a very similar uh, sort of opportunity today where most people don't encounter sex trafficking or or, or labor trafficking. Uh, they don't they maybe not don't don't witness it firsthand, but the reality is it's happening in every community in America. So if people just become awareness that aware that it is happening in their hometown uh, and choose to partner and, and and do something about that, then we can really tip the scales on these things and it won't it, it won't any longer be the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the history of the I, world. Well, the organizations can't do it themselves. They've got to have the public get involved, you know, to truly put a dent in that, you know, they need help. And I love seeing how many uh, just celebrities and well-known figures. I mean, Tony Robbins and yeah. you know uh, King and Country, and you know just these different. I don't know if you've seen that movie. Probably have the movie Priceless, where the, mm -hmm. the lead from King and Country is stars in that movie. If you haven't seen that movie, it is life-changing. You know, it's phenomenal. It's about a guy who did something. You know, he stepped up. He, he and so it's. Um, you know, this is a really soft spot for my heart. For my heart, if we had, if we said there's a, a core area for certainty that we care about, it's the project, it's the projects that can affect children. And you know, as a dad myself, I think most of us are parents and on our team. And you know, it, it's easy to think that this just goes on in some third world country, mm -hmm. but it's going on right next door. You know, it is in our own backyards in little bit in little towns and all across the U.S. and Canada and. You know, I just I love seeing like the signs in the restrooms now on the doors there. Are you are you a victim of this? Call this number. Um, you know, but you know, I worry that they don't have a phone to call. So how you know somebody else has to notice. Somebody else has to notice that that person looks scared or they look like they're being controlled or you know we just have to take our our blinders off, I guess, and and be uh, courageous enough to to do something about it. So. Uh, you know, you're you're familiar with our program that we're developing, the Certainty Partners program, to try to help um, organizations like Polaris and A21 and OUR and, mm -hmm. and so forth. I mean, I love OUR's story, their whole, their name, it kind of comes from that Harriet Beecher Stowe era, the Underground Railroad, 
you know, yeah. helping liberate people from, from slavery. And so uh, we've talked a lot about our program. In fact, I attribute in many respects it coming about because of you, because we were talking to you about helping OUR just from a cost saving standpoint. I remember the day it happened, we're sitting at a right. dinner table up at the cafe up at the up on the top of the mountain, Traverse Mountain there in Utah. And, and it was like we got hit by a ton of bricks saying, this is what you need to do. This is, you could do more than just save money. You could actually raise money for organizations like OUR. This is something you need to do. And you were there. I mean, it, I don't know if you felt the same thing. I had hairs on my arm sticking up and we just felt like we were being pushed in this direction. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think we're doing and uh, or what you think of what we're doing and and uh, any feedback you have for the team i mean it's you've been in the trenches right you've been trying to raise funds for two years you've been you know how difficult that is a lot of people are burned out a lot of people want to help but they they don't have the means to maybe or they're tapped out or covid has hit their business hard or something and we feel like we have a solution for we have a response for those that want to do more they just don't know how but uh, you know, what do you, what do you think of it? Yeah, I mean, it, it just just the business model in general. I mean, you guys are are creating capital and profits in the margins, right? So, right. Um, and and I, and I think you said it. You said like a, you know people want to help, but they don't they don't always have a path to that. They don't always know uh, you know what that looks like or or how that might take form. And I think. You're not only coming to them with an opportunity to to really impact the world in a significant way, but you're also coming to them with with the resources to do it. Essentially, right? I mean, your team is putting in the efforts uh, to you know re reduce their 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 burden on on operational costs, and a little bit of that can be used to make a huge impact at at a nonprofit and and uh, perhaps particularly you know. Uh, towards an anti-trafficking organization that that could literally change the trajectory of, of somebody's life. I mean, somebody who's, um, you know, being abused, you know, dozens of times every single day uh, now has an opportunity uh, for hope and, and light and an opportunity to get out of that because of what these organizations are doing. And that really starts with that initial conversation that you have uh, with with that organization to say, hey, you know, we're we're not just about making money as an organization, but we always we also care about making an impact and and giving back. And uh, you're just, I mean, you're you're giving them the the opportunity and the solution in in one conversation, and and that's that's pretty unique. I mean, there's not many organizations. Actually, I really can't think of any organization that has has come to me and said. Hey, we really want to help you out, um, and it's not going to cost you anything. It's not going to cost these other organizations anything. Uh, we're going to take care of everything and 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 partner with you guys to make a big, big impact. So I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. We uh, we feel really strongly about it. You know, you it's, it's interesting. I hadn't thought of it like that. But it's you know, you guys work with donors all the time, create you know, offering this opportunity, right? The opportunity for them to take part and for them to do something more. And I think a lot of people want to do something above and beyond themselves. They want to pay it forward. Um, but you're, it's really what we're doing. We're offering them the opportunity to make a difference in areas that they care about, not necessarily just this one, but an area that's important to them, areas that have need, but then also the, the path to do that, right? The solution. So um, I, I feel like the idea was inspired. You were there when it came to us, as I said. So I, I really appreciate that, Gary. I don't know if it would have come about if we hadn't had that conversation and and um, seeing it unfold before us, you know, right before our eyes, it's pretty exciting. So uh, anything you want to add before I let you go? I appreciate your time, man. Yeah, of course. It's always great to connect with you, Patrick, and, um, you know, love what your team is doing and we'll definitely be cheering you guys on. Anything I can do to help, uh, you know, you know how to reach me. Absolutely, but. Thanks so much. Thanks for staying up late on a, what is it, 10, 11 o'clock there? Yeah, no worries, man. You are a trooper. I appreciate you getting together after putting the kids down. So um, thanks so much. And uh, next time we get together, hopefully you can come out and meet with us in person. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that for sure. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot, bud. Okay.